Um, yeah, I'd love to ask me to talk about a new EU project rather than my main part of work, which is about magnetic nanoparticles in gene delivery. Okay, uh, I'll only present two data slides and the rest of it, if you want, so is concepts and speculation in the statement. Uh, for those of you who are not biologists, just uh, quickly to remember where the uh, information in our cells comes from uh, that is required for proteins doing their work. This information comes from DNA, which is found in the cell nucleus. Uh, this information is translated via a second nucleic acid type messenger RNA and, uh, and finally translated into protein sequences. Proteins do the work more or less in our cells. Protein drugs are well known, have been used as therapeutics for a long time. On the other hand, at the head of this information flow, gene therapy is still in an experimental phase and messenger RNA therapies are almost absent until now, but nevertheless are really interesting molecules. Um, the gene-activated matrix concept. So due to this information flow in cells, uh, at least in theory, you can influence any process in cells by introducing the required genetic information into cells. And this we want to use uh, for making bioactive implants. Put genetic information on implants which tell cells that grow on implants uh, which direction they should differentiate to. So these objects here symbolize uh, gene vectors that are shuttles for gene delivery. That's the nano aspect uh, of all this stuff. If you put such implants in cell culture, cells will colonize uh, the matrix, or this happens also in vivo. Some of them will uh, encounter gene vectors, will then take them up and uh, will get genetically modified in consequence. Now if the gene vector encodes for a growth factor protein, the cells will start to produce growth factors and this will lead to autocrine and paracrine stimulation and in the end to a differentiation process. So before this EU project even started, we had done some studies. This is quite a busy slide. So we put gene vectors on titanium substrates, actually titanium foils, like you see them here. They encoded EMP2. Uh, the gene vectors were embedded in a polylactide uh, matrix and vacuum tried. We put this on critical bone defects in the red mandibular uh, bone and you see in the control uh, the, the critical size defect is large enough so it doesn't heal whereas with these gene vectors and actually quite a low dose of gene vector the defect heals uh, completely which can also be followed by uh, micro CT and uh, histology. So this was a very encouraging result with just one single gene where the recombinant protein PMP2 is in clinical application and sells for a lot of money every year for spine fusion uh, and things like that. Dental implants, we were interested in whether in the same manner we could uh, increase the uh, bone implant contact area, the trabecular thickness and bone mineral density on dental implants. So the implants we have been using were from Straumann, that's a link to Basel here. This was a mini pig model, recombinant protein and gene vectors encoding DMT2 were compared and in fact what you could observe with the gene vector coated implants was more rapid and in, in the extent better integration of such implants in this uh, mini pig model. That was the situation before uh, this EU code came, came, came up which we applied for biomimetic gels and polymers. I'm not going to read all this for you but what the EU was asking for was bioactive molecules on engineered biomaterials. It should be a multidisciplinary approach. It should be used for local tissue repair. It was expected that one has inhibition of inflammation and uh, it should be natural or synthetic biomimetic gels and polymers. And there should be a clear potential for medical applications. And all this was directed towards uh, new therapeutic options for arthritis. So <clears throat> the facts about arthritis uh, and degenerative diseases in general, it's a tremendous medical and economic burden, especially in the aging populations. The self-healing potential of osteoarthritic tissue is severely compromised or absent. And our hypothesis was that we can awaken the self-healing potential of this damaged tissue by the controlled expression of therapeutic genes. 
the objective of this EU project is to have spatial and temporal control of regenerative bioactivity on command and demand, which means demand by biological necessity and command from outside. And the tools we are using are gene vectors, adenovirus on the one hand and their non-viral counterparts on the other hand, and innovative uh, biomimetic uh, matrices. Uh, the cartoon here shows the problem in osteoarthritis. You have uh, inflammation in the <coughs> articular capsule, you have cartilage degeneration and you have bone degeneration. And these are the two uh, deficiencies uh, which we want to address by this bioactive concept. So in our imagination we have three compartments which we want to fill with mesenchymal stem cells embedded in biomatrices which comprise gene vectors. So there is a first compartment where we want to have a self-regulatory uh, uh, gene expression pattern of an anti-inflammatory factor which is only active if an inflammatory signal comes in. This we achieve via the COX-2 promoter driving the tra therapeutic transgene expression. Or this is going to be achieved, that's our hope. The second compartment is actually now for cartilage regeneration. There our therapeutic gene is TGF, the TGF beta 1 gene. And the signal to turn gene expression on, we want to achieve by heat what we are going to do. We are going to embed in this hyaluronic acid matrix, which comes from one of the project partners, magnetic nanoparticles. And according to the concepts Dr. Jordan will talk about, use magnetic hyperthermia to increase the temp temperature in this uh, compartment sufficiently to turn on gene expression. And finally, about bone regeneration, we are using pharmacological uh, a pharmacological switch, the so-called TED on, TED off system, which is active in the presence of the antibiotic tet tetracycline and the therapeutic gene will be BMP2, which promotes uh, uh, bone healing. And the gene vector now, in this case, is embedded in a biomaterial matrix and a microporous, microporous calcium uh, um, <coughs> phosphate matrix from Biomat a company in France. So this is the overall uh, concept. Here you see uh, chondrocytes embedded in a gene-activated matrix. In this case, it was fibrin glue with uh, non-viral gene vectors co-embedded, and uh, it's just nice pictures how cells take up these gene vectors. They don't look like nice nanoparticles. They're a bit larger. They rather look like potatoes, but the important thing is they express uh, they lead to expression of the gene which is transported here. <laughs> so the consortium members are myself and my colleague Martina Anton who coordinates this project, Mauro Alini from the AO Foundation in Switzerland, Olivier Silfati from a small biotech company in France, Pierre van Osch from Erasmus Medical Center, Mary Murphy, uh, Anieri Canceda and Chiara Gentili from Genoa, Idal Cusi from Inserm in Nord and Pascal Borchi from the Sparty company who produces these bone substitution materials and Katrina Zöller for public outreach and now a statement. So we want to use the patient's body to make its own regenerative drug by virtue of engineered nucleic acids. Bioactivity of uh, nucleic acids can be controlled through internal and external stimuli that's known from uh, work of other people. Feedback control can be realized by gene vectors, which would be difficult to do with recombinant proteins. Uh, concerted regenerative action, that's our goal, can be envisaged. And gamma research is expected to deliver a toolbox <laughs> of future, for future therapeutic options. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>